Hey, good afternoon and welcome to another show on Praise Talk Show. My name is Praise, Praise. I hope that I've met you well in the comfort of your home. God has been, you know, tremendously good to all of us, to me especially, um, that he brings me to your home or to your screen every Saturday with a guest that would either in, empower us, correct us, help us, um, coach us, um, give us information that would be um, of use to our health, our finances, to our daily living and um, I'm so glad that um, you know a lot of you out there are, are also being blessed by what we are doing I especially want to thank those of you that are on a weekly basis now especially my viewers on Facebook that are sharing um, the videos up until today that I'm doing this recording somebody shared um, praise talk show on her page I want to say thank you very much um, for those of you that will be watching um, and I'll be watching with you I would obviously send you a, a shout out to say thank you for watching or thank you for sharing this video you help us spread the word you help us empower people um, amazingly last week's show um, uh, speaking to someone this week and she was telling me what she was doing from the show she said I've watched it over and over and over again so that she can make use of the information that we are bringing your way I want you to know that help um, that I recently discovered is when you prosper in a specific area many of us are constantly looking for help and my question at one time was like, Lord, how do we now recognize, recognize the help that is sent our way? Um, and then how are we able to now say that we have received help? And then I had a man of God say, help is when you prosper in a particular area. And so whatever we bring in your way today, if you were to take it, apply it, and work with it, then your help has come because you will definitely be able to prosper in it. The Word of God tells us as well um, from Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8 that if you take this Word of God, meditate upon it day and night and do not allow it to depart from your mouth. Keep speaking it, keep saying it, keep confessing it. It says you would have success. And that is help. Help is when you see what you want and my guest today is one of those people that is she has a tremendous testimony um, some people will say it's her story but um, from that God is using her as an international speaker a woman that is empowering other women um, in other areas of their lives and helping them to tell their story stay tuned and I'll be bringing her your way shortly <laughs> Please don't forget to help us spread this word. Help us to like and share this program, this video right now, this show right now, as you're watching it. And don't forget that you can also watch us on www.faithworldtv.com. But without much ado, please help me welcome my guest for today. She's another unique woman, Placida Echero. You are welcome to Praise Talk Show. Thank you very Let's much. See Thank da. you. You've been on my mind ever since we met. Like this woman has got to come to this show. And thank God that God has made it possible today. Thank you. Um, you're watching, you, you're looking at a living miracle. <laughs> By the time she tells you her story, I always put this at the end of my introduction of her that you would have no excuse in life. Just no excuse. <laughs> Many of us that have excuses, you know, it's because of this, it's because of that, my my height, my color, my origin. By the time you hear Placida's testimony, you would know that you don't have an excuse, but just to get up and get on with what God has assigned you to do. Placida, tell us a little bit about yourself, please, today. Okay. Um you know what you said to share a bit of my story? Yeah. And I said to you, what part of <laughs> what part of the story do you want to um, you want me to share? Mm. Um, so I'm just going to summarize a bit so, yes. because if I was going to share everything, then we'll probably be here for the next. I know, I know, <laughs> I know, I know. So um, I think the big blow growing up is finding out that I had sickle cell anemia, mm -hmm. and my parents discovered when I was two years old. And back in the days, uh, when I say back in the days, just accept it was back in the days. Don't try to figure out what <laughs> back in the days that was. 
<laughs> well, back in the days, man. <laughs> so anyway, back in the days, it, it wasn't quite known what it was. So kids used to die, and they used to think you were one of those children who died and came back. So um, one of the one day, my my parents dropped me off with an auntie in the village, and by the time they came back, my auntie had slashed my face. So I've got some marks because she thought I was one of those children who came to trouble their moms, mm. you know, <laughs> and so I had that mark on my face. But my parents didn't make me feel any different. So they raised me like they raised all the other kids. Um, I was allowed to do everything except play in the evening because of mosquitoes, you know, okay, they so protected, the yeah, right. malaria. And I hated mm. it because I really wanted to play and roll in the grass and all those things, but you know, they would stop me and I just felt I need to break out of this overprotection. And being first daughter, I was daddy's, daddy's girl, like mm. serious daddy's girl. Mm. My dad used to he would carry me to bed. That was how daddy's girl I was, you know, take me to his office. So, and I really needed to break out. And um, when I went into secondary school, I insisted to be in boarding school. I only lasted the first semester in boarding school and I was back home because I couldn't survive doing things myself. I always break down and whenever I was ill, I might spend two or three weeks in hospital because mm -hmm. I was ill. So what got around that this girl had sickle cell? And back then in Nigeria, people believed that you couldn't live past 40. But if you got to 40 years old, you were a living miracle. You know, and um, so sometimes when I walk on the streets, I hear people say, oh, she has sickle cell anemia. They are whispering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they are whispering so loud that you, <laughs> you can, can hear, hear it. <laughs> you can hear it, you know. Um, but I didn't think it could affect my life until I fell in love. Right. You know, so it's time to get married and, you know, perfect man, height, shoulder, everything was just, just perfect. God had answered the prayers. Yeah. And then he took me to see his mom. I was very close to his mom. We used to cook together, lie together, do everything together. And I didn't know that they were planning another wedding, even though I was engaged to this guy. Wow. Oh, wow. Planning another wedding? Yes. Even though you were engaged. engaged to him. And so he got married while I was still engaged to him. Without him saying anything to you? No. Wow. He didn't have the confidence. Right. Or the boldness to tell me because he... He had faith, you know, he had faith, but his parents, you know, family influence in Africa, you know, this was... What did he have faith in? Well, he, he believed... Yeah, you're yeah, I'm, trying to, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to understand where his faith was being applied, you know. Like, he used to say to me, mm -hmm. you know, he didn't care about the whole sickle cell thing and right. all that. So that's why I said he had faith, faith okay, in, okay. in my health and God. But the God. faith could not stop him from getting married well, to I think else. the faith couldn't stop him from resisting his parents' decision. Okay. Yeah. Okay. He couldn't stop him. So he went ahead with parents' decision. And then that's when he hits me that actually this sickle cell thing is something to think about. Hmm. And then my love journey, growing up as a child and as a Christian girl, I got born again really, really young. Right. And um, hmm. my whole belief in, in marriage and relationship and watching my parents is I'm going to meet this brother. We're going to get married. We're going to have these beautiful kids. If I had planned my children. Now, yeah. one of those girls that plan how right. their mm. family were going to be. Yeah. By this time, this would have happened. By this time, this would have happened. But it didn't work out that way. Mm. You know, my love journey was like that. Zigzag. So I kept falling in and out of catching the vision. Mm. How did you feel with that disappointment? Well, it broke me. Mm -hmm. But I didn't stop feeling love in my heart because I believed in love. Right. And I don't know how to keep hate in my heart. So I had to forgive so that my prayers can go to heaven. Yeah. So I'm one of those people that listen to the pastor and the preacher really well. <laughs> <laughs> You're a good student. <laughs> I'm a good student. I like to listen and yeah. I like to try to understand what God is saying. So yeah. when it comes to holding any hurt or pain in my heart, I find a way quickly to let it go and mm. free myself so that mm. my prayers can go up to heaven because mm. i need that connection with god more yeah. than anything anybody else yeah. so i quickly had to forget move on I kept meeting people who you know they prayed and they saw the vision and they all they, i think i'm a nice person so they always catch the vision 
you know, when they catch the vision, and the vision didn't tell them that there is something in her. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you keep reminding me. I'm you just thinking about this vision, about this vision. <laughs> just takes me to a video that I watched. So somebody had watched this video. This, this, um, and then this woman needed to get rid of this man, you know, and he had, this guy had come to tell her how much he had seen, what heard, what the Lord had said, and everything else, and everything else, you know. And so this woman, it was her turn to pray, I think. And then she started to do this thing like, Lord, thank you for saving me after five abortions and after this <laughs> and after that and, you know, after prostitution. I mean, she just... But she didn't want the man. She didn't want the guy. Like, if you said the Lord said, you know, by the time she finished her story, she opened her eye, the guy had disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Everything you keep saying about the vision. Yeah, catching the vision. No, it was, it was so much, I don't know, you know, Christians, this is also very modern, but back in the days, you needed to catch the vision of somebody giving you umbrella to tell you know you dream this dream, and then somebody say, "Every vision was mixed with the information about you was missing in this." Yeah, the, so did it become like a story that I'm waiting to see the end of this one? Exactly. And actually, a friend of mine usually say she had this watch. She said, "I am watching my life like a story." So wow. I began to watch the unfolding, unfolding of my own life, and see where it was going to go. Hmm. But cutting sto long story short, because there are lots of love journeys, yeah, yeah. Um, I met someone and we fell in love and everything was good and we had a society wedding. Remember, I'm daddy's girl and first daughter, my daddy really wanted to show off his daughter was getting married, so he actually put an ad. We did 1,000 wedding cards. We ran out of cards and people heard on the radio that I was getting married and just turned up. That's how, how that wedding was. Hmm. But you see, it's not about how big your wedding is. It's not about, you know, what you put into it, the, the decorations and the train. That's not what keeps a marriage. Mm. Because three months after I was looking for this man I married, he had gone. Three months? Yeah. He had gone. That must have been another blow on the face. That was the biggest blow for me because every other one I had before him didn't matter. This one mattered. I had gone on the altar and had made the vow. So where did I go wrong? I had done all the deliverances and I had prayed. You know, my pastor had approved. So how did the pastor not see it? And how did I not see it? And how did this God have served all my life from when I was 14? How did he not tell me this was going to happen? And I think that was my biggest pain for so long. Because I think I, God and I had a fight. I still mm. went to church. Mm. I still read my Bible. Mm. But I wasn't talking to God. Wow. We had a fight. Mm. <laughs> so even when I prayed, remember I said I don't like to carry any grudge in my heart mm -hmm. because I didn't want my prayers to yeah. connect with him. But when I prayed, I just prayed, but I wasn't talking to him. I just prayed because I had to pray. I'm a Christian. I've always known to be a Christian and to pray. Wow. You know, as you're saying this, Basita, I'm just wondering how many women are in such a situation right now, you know, that I, I, I mentioned to someone recently, just before you carry on, I said, I've actually had this conversation with God. I said, why don't you just open this book for me to see how this journey is going to go? Yeah then we can shut it and then I'll just keep leaving. Then I would know, okay, yeah, that's going to happen at this junction. Okay, yeah, I, could, I saw that coming. No, but it won't be fun. I know. But, <laughs> it know, won't it, be fun. It's amazing when you, you, you're angry with God at this point mm -hmm. because you hadn't seen the end of the story. I hadn't seen the end But yet, of the story. Where we, whatever junction we get to in our lives, we get to that place like, I didn't see this coming. And... It's either you saw it and you hid it from me, yeah. or didn't you see it to have, pre have, have preempted me so that I would have been, you know, put my guards on, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and it's a dangerous place for us to be, but keep going, keep going. It's a really dangerous place for us to be yeah. because, and then sometimes we think that it is by our own power and by our own mind and our, by our own setting rules and making sure that everything is in place mm. that makes us have the, you know, the blessings God has for us. So remember I told you, I'm someone who likes to structure things. Yes. I like to plan things. By this time I have my PhD, by this time I have my kids, by this time this has happened. I was that kind of person. Mm. 
you know, so when this man came and it looked like he was the one, the signs looked like he was the one, maybe God was speaking and I wasn't listening, or maybe sure. he needed to be in my life to ignite the process that would take me to where I am today. Wow. Okay. Okay. I'm glad we've also, you also brought that in because that would allow someone to wait. Do you understand? To be able to pause to say, okay. You know, you watch some movies and you say, is there a twist to this? <laughs> <laughs> Let's watch out for the twist. Keep going. <laughs> so, yeah, so where I am today, and then when I look back, you can't say divorce is good because divorce isn't good. I don't mm -hmm. want anybody to come and tell me they're getting a divorce because I'm going to stop you and say, think about this. Mm -hmm. But when I look back, I said, now I understand. Now I understand why all that heartbreak had to happen. Wow. Because I was daddy's girl. I was one of those uh, Ajebotas, as Yorubas would say, you know. And I used to say, what, what do you mean about Ajebota? Butter, no, melt from whatever, mm -hmm. you know. Soft and everything. Driver took me to school and brought me back. Driver would drive to Soka from Port Harcourt to get, send me things. So that was the kind of child I was. I, had, I didn't know pain or sadness mm -hmm. or sorrow. I have never suffered. Now, someone will also say, do, do you have to suffer for God to bless you? But I needed experience, yeah. you know, and I think I needed to go through that. And I don't regret any of the pains and any of the hurts and any of the people who were part of that journey. Wow. They are my friends. I still talk to them. I mean, we don't have conversations every time, yeah, but yeah. they are there on Facebook. Yeah. They are going to watch this video. They yeah. know I'm not telling a lie yeah. because I don't lie about the process. Mm -hmm. But they had to be part of that plan to mm -hmm. where God is taking me. Yeah. And today, you know. I'm in a lovely, fantastic relationship. You Not know. just a relationship, in a marriage. In a marriage, <laughs> in a marriage. You know, I'm being treated like a queen. Yes. You know, exactly how every woman should be treated and loved. Mm. You know, it's like all those fairy tales I had in my head, I have it now. A man who cooks, a man, but, you know, I'm like a spoiled brat. In fact, in the house, we say, you say, I'm a spoiled brat. I say, yes, you are a spoiled brat. You are spoiled. We had a conversation with my brother. He said, you're looking so young. This is my younger brother. I'm yeah. supposed to be our first child. He said, what are you doing to her? Mark said, she's not doing anything. She's spoiled. <laughs> she's looking after my wife. <laughs> she's spoiled. But you see, I, could, I, didn't, I didn't see this. Mm. Back then, it just looked like the whole world had crashed. There was, there was no light at the end of the tunnel. Mm. Mm. Absolutely no light at the end of the tunnel. But today, God brought light. God brought light. And did you meet? Did you meet your your husband in a in a conventional way, or was it like <laughs> what, one of those meetings that you say, "Oh yeah, this was what I planned, or this is how I met. I was meant to meet my husband, or I imagined that I'll meet him." Actually, I didn't. It was a very unusual way. And if I had known I was going to meet my husband that day i probably would have gone away because i met him in the year i declared this is the year of no man i was just about to ask you <laughs> had you given up <laughs> just at the point of it okay i had not given up on love but okay. i was i just felt i was tired of expecting it to happen okay. and i wanted to focus on my business on myself I just wanted to love me because sometimes you forget yourself sure. and I wanted to just love me. I wanted to be more passionate about what I do and, you know, take off some more hobbies. That's what I wanted to do. And so at the end of this particular year in December, I had prayed, you know how you pray your New Year's prayers? Yeah. And I had prayed mm -hmm. this prayer and I said, Lord, this New Year coming in, I'm not going to talk about marriage. I'm not going to talk about man. I'm not gonna, you will not hear any prayer from me about marriage. It's just going to be about myself, my business, charity, helping people. But next year is the year of no man. I declared it. Mm. And on the third of the following year, wow. January 3, <laughs> it is so funny. I meet the man who is my prince. You know, I call him every, I call on him. On the third day, shall I rise again? <laughs> on the third day. <laughs> on the third day, wow. you know, I meet this man. And I'll tell you how I met him. Mm. I don't do nightclubs. I don't go to, you know, my friends have invited me to, you know, I don't do nightclubs. You know, I'm a very churchish girl, you know, I don't. 
But I went to serve in December of that year, the year before the, the year of no man. A friend called me. <laughs> a friend called me and said she was in London and she was in this thing called crisis. Mm -hmm. And I said, what's crisis? So it's a charity for homeless people. And I said, I don't know anything about this thing. I would love to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, how do you get to do how do you get involved? She said, go online, register, it's over, it's usually in December, so you get part, you'll be part of it in the following year's December. So while she was talking, I went online, you know, internet these days, and I started filling out the form. And then the email came in to say, you've been approved for the last day. Of that year? Of that year. And normally you have to wait, wait for, for December, 12 months. 12 months. Wow. Yeah. God was up now, to something. my husband, <laughs> on the other hand, was in a cafe, mm -hmm. And somebody said to him, oh, so how are you spending Christmas? He said, oh, I'm alone. He said, oh, why don't you get involved in crisis? Wow. And he said, crisis, what's crisis? The same thing, conversation. Mm -hmm. Well, he, he had a conversation two days before I had mine. Right. And then he went to his room and registered and signed up to be a driver. Okay. So he had two days before the program ended. I had one day, the last day. So we went and... I was so happy. I was serving, washing dishes, opening doors. I did general service. <laughs> You're smiling at me. Mm -hmm. And um, the next thing was, they said, oh, we're going to have a party for all the volunteers. And it's going to be 1,000 volunteers in this nightclub of like three floors. And I said, mm, I don't do nightclubs. 1,000 people, too much. Mm -hmm. This same friend, God bless her, Mila, came and said, are you coming for the crisis party? And I said, no, 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 I'm not doing crisis party. You know, I don't do nightclubs. 1,000 people, too much. Oh, but I'm coming into London from Cambridge. Okay, come and see me. So I went to see Mila. Going into this party to see Mila, I wasn't even sure what to dress that day. I kept fiddling with my hair, and they had warned us not to be late. And I was, standing my, I was panicking, praying. I was like, God, I don't know what to do with my hair. I don't know what to wear. You know, all these nightclub things. I was so confused. But anyway, I got myself dressed. Got into the nightclub, and I just saw Mila. Mila saw me and just said, oh, let me show you how to meet people. And I was like, I didn't come here to meet people. I came here for you. Well, well she met somebody, walked away, and left me. <laughs> and left me. And so when she left me, um, I went and sat down where she had met this guy and, and gone, disappeared. And I sat down there. And then this man walked in. He had missed his group of people, so group of drivers. We're supposed to meet at the pub and then come together. He went to the pub and didn't find them. So you see how God was setting me up? The master planner. I master him. planner. He was yeah. setting me up. So he came in. He had missed his group of drivers, came in, just looked, saw this lady sitting down, smiled, and it's very unpolite not to smile back. So I smiled back. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So I smiled back and then he came and sat by me. Hi, my name is Mark. And I said, my name is Placida. Um, so what did you do? I did general service, cleaning, washing dishes, opening doors. Oh, I did driving. So what do you do in real life? I'm a business coach. I'm a business coach. Oh, that's real. That's interesting. And that was how it is. Wow. And then three months later, we're here. <laughs> and after how many years now? It's three years, actually. Three, three years, years. Three years. And she is shining and enjoying a marriage that she's always looked forward to and hoped for. So there's nothing that God cannot do. He's planning out, you know, your story. So all I could say to you today, if you're watching us, first of all, share this video. <laughs> Help us spread the word. Maybe you know someone that is going through a tough situation that has given up on their life. You can share this video with them so that they can hear Placida's story and also, you know, be a blessing to them. But if you are the person that is there and you've given up on love or given up on life, just take a pause because a master planner has got something that you don't know about. You know, I, I blogged something this, this week on my page about the hide and sick game, you know, how God does the hiding and he wants us to search things out. You don't know what will come out when you just stay with him. You know, he's got great things ahead of you. But so you also have a testimony, a, an amazing testimony of how you had an incident, of how um, um, 
with with a sickle cell and you were in coma for is it two weeks? Twenty four days. Twenty four days, which is more than two weeks. That's a month. Nearly a month. Nearly a month, yeah. Nearly a month yeah. or three weeks and some days. Um and you were here. So how did you recover back to where you are now? Honestly, when I think about that 24 days, you begin to understand the power of God's connection. Hmm. And my husband came into my life not too long, and I had that breakdown. Hmm. I wasn't even ill. We were coming back from a weekend, and in the car was a can of an energy drink, which I can't mention yeah, the name. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I had a sip of that drink because I was very, feeling very thirsty in the car. I gave him back the can, and about 15 minutes later, my whole body began to go crazy. We stopped at a, a service center, got some water, drank water. I said, we take a walk? And I said, no, let's just go home. Between Manchester and London, I couldn't come out of the car. So he had to carry me out, upstairs, put me in bed, went down to get our luggage. And by the time he came back, I was going. So I heard him call the ambulance. And um, I heard the ambulance say 45 minutes. The next thing I heard was take her into the room. So ambulance didn't come, so he had to, he said he couldn't wait for the ambulance, so he had to take me to the hospital, Royal London Hospital. And I heard take her into the room. And then the next thing I heard was, Placida, Placida, do you know where you are? You've been in a coma for 24 days. This is Royal London Hospital. And I saw all these faces looking down at me. I didn't know what they were talking about, you know, I just was, the only person I could recognize was my husband. I couldn't move, you know, and I noticed I had all these wires and everything around me. Uh, when I started to gain my consciousness and talk, um, I had to relearn everything, so I couldn't spell or write. I, I should have brought in a sample to show you a picture of my first attempt to write. It was a, like a baby scribbling. It didn't make any sense. I was trying to write, I want water, but it was, the pen was all over the place. It didn't make any sense. So I had to relearn to write, relearn to spell. I couldn't remember, had partial memory loss, couldn't remember my street address or even how to pronounce words. I spent a total of 44 days in hospital, so another 20 days in hospital, uh, physio. But this same man, you know, I can't share this story, and sometimes it makes me emotional, that God could bring somebody into my life who loves me more than this physical body. Mm. Because it's so much beyond this physical body. He could have walked. Actually, we've only been together for a few, for a few months. He could have walked. But he stayed with me. The doctors, the nurses, they said, this man you're married is a reason. Well, God is the reason, but he spoke into my ears every day. He would come in into the morning and he would say, hi, babe, kiss me. And he would talk to me. I had this for breakfast. And the whole plan of his day, he would talk to me about it. When he's going for lunch, I'm going for lunch now. And he would talk. And when he's going, he wanted to stay in the hospital. They won't let him stay. So when he's going, he will say, I'm going now. I'll see you tomorrow. He'll kiss me goodnight. And then I was told that I began to respond to him. And I was only responding to him. I wouldn't respond to anybody else who said anything to me lying down there. But whenever he came, then my eyes would open and my eyes would close. And so he knew I was there. He knew I could hear him. And my doctor said to me, he said, we called him at some point and we said to him, so we gave him the hard talk to be prepared that She's not going to come back. She may not come back. And he told them she's still in there. She will come back. Mm. He said the day they told him that he, he went back home in his car, he just broke down and said, God, I have just found her. Mm. Don't take her away from me. I know. I know. I know. It's, it's, it's a beautiful story. You know what you were saying it? <clears throat> this came back to me, love unboxed. 
Yeah. And I believe that's why God has given you the title of this book. Yeah. That if you think you know what love is, um, this story would really explain to you what true love is. And what you were responding to was love. That's that's love. Love is not I love you, I love you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. not all those crazy things. Yeah. Take me to the movie, you know, you didn't buy me Lamborghini or whatever or yeah. Maserati. You didn't yeah. buy me yeah. Porsche. Yeah. That's not it. Yeah. Love is as somebody looks at you and says, I'm gonna I'm gonna make you well. Because mm. when I was learning to walk, mm. and I wish I brought these pictures, I was learning to walk. I used to bend mm. and he would straighten me. Before the physio could come in the hospital to see me, he's already done his own physio. Wow. This man used to massage me like he was an African woman. He's English, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But he will massage my body. Exactly. Where is this my from? Delivered from heaven. Yeah, was when I say he massage like an African woman. He's not an African man. Mm. So he massaged my bone, my legs, he would move my hand and I would say, ow. Oh. He said, Yes, I've got to do it, babe. Otherwise your hands, you know, I've got to do it. So he did all. Oh, God bless him. Amen. Amen. And he got us into tears, you know, earlier this year, actually, because he was, um, um, Lucinda had to speak at the um, Unique Women Retreat that we had um, during the Mother's Day weekend. Yes. And he gave us a pretty deep surprise um, presentation, played this music um, that I think he, he heard when he went to yeah. um, a supermarket Target, and yeah. when he was praying to the Lord that you just gave this woman to me, you cannot take her away. And you, I mean, we just had to just listen to this music because it was a music of love and, and everyone was in tears to know that someone can love one, someone to this extent, yeah. you know, he didn't, you know, we often say to the Lord that he didn't have to do it, he did. but he did, he, yeah. you know, and that is because of the love that the Lord had put in his heart for his wife. You know, so many times we hear of stories how um, people give up on, 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 on their, their partners because of a, a challenging situation yeah. that they're faced with and they, they couldn't just hold it. They couldn't just, just bear the storm. But, um, you know, maybe God is speaking to someone to, to bear the storm yeah. because it would, it would pay, it would pay. Love is stronger than what you just said. It's stronger than the, the hives, the, the, you know, the balloons floating yeah, up in the air, going in, you know, cloud nine. <laughs> they, you won't always wake up and feel that you're in love. love. Love is not like that. And my pastor would say, just before you carry on, he would say that it's better for you to walk in love than to fall in yeah, love. Yeah. Is it because if you fall in love, by the time you get up and you see the reality of the love, you would back out <laughs> or, or the reality of the situation that you're actually in, you'll back out. But if you walk in love, your eyes will be open. You will be sensitive to see the things that are around you and you would embrace them with the, you know, with the reality that this is the life. This is what, this is who I've chosen to love. And this is who I want to be with. Now, this is the plan that God is going to empower us to go through in order for us to stay together. We're not meant to be talking about a love story, but you know, <laughs> you see the story is a love story. Um, but as I said to you, after you hear um, of Placida's testimony today, you would give up on giving excuses. There's a woman that has been in coma for 24 days. She's right here speaking to us. She's making impact around the world. We're just gonna go into that section of her life. You know, gone through so many disappointments. She was in a relationship and the man got married while she was in the relationship. She still didn't give up on life. Many would have taken things. I'm not saying, you know, that, um, you know, it's because those people that have taken them are disadvantaged, you know, or we are better than them. No, but she chose another path. Yeah. Many times people say to us, it's not the, the, the situations or the challenges that are thrown at us, it's how we choose to react yeah. that makes the difference. I want to encourage you to make, make a choice to react in a better way so that you'll have a story to tell tomorrow. Feeling good, yeah. Feeling good, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. That's what. Yeah. Yes, that was. <laughs> Praise God. And today, Prasida, you are impacting so many lives. Yeah. How have you been able to use your story 
to help other women. You see, the thing is, when things happen to us, sometimes we think it's just us. Mm. And, and sometimes we feel ashamed. Yeah. And I know that... It's the shame that makes us not talk about it. Yes, we feel ashamed. We feel embarrassed yeah. for God. And if yeah. you're a Christian and you think God had failed you, it's like, how can you tell people that God didn't watch your back? So I was upset with him, but I was also ashamed for him. Like, you know, we prayed, we did everything, and it still didn't work out. So mm. something must have gone wrong somewhere. And it wasn't me that went wrong. Maybe he went wrong somewhere. <laughs> you know? So sometimes you, you just feel... Shagun is laughing right now. Yeah, he's probably <laughs> laughing and saying, here you go, yeah. Placida, you've come again. So um, we, we have all these things in our head that tells us, don't tell anybody your story. Don't talk about your story. You know, hide. Cover mm. up yourself. Mm. You know, um, put on the makeup. Put on the makeup. You know, yeah. shut everybody out of your life and be a super strong woman. You, you know, there's some people who are like that. You can't. They don't smile. They just block everyone. They just shut everyone out mm. because they're hurting and they can't trust. They, mm. you know, they don't see any reason to trust anybody. Mm. But I found out that whenever I go and do my speaking gigs and I talk about business. And I talk about social media, monetization, leveraging your business. And then I bring a bit of my story, my journey. My journey is more impactful. The women hear those stories and they are like, wow, you went through all that and you're still standing. Yeah. You know, and then you think yours is a big one. But when you hear another woman's story, you're like, huh? Mine isn't even that big. But it doesn't stop me from saying it out loud. Yeah. Because when we grow up, there are voices that people have told us things. You're not beautiful. You're ugly. You're not intelligent. You can't run a business. Maybe you're married to somebody and you've been trying to set up a business and it's not working. And your husband keeps telling you, stop wasting money. You can't do business. So in your head, you've told yourself you can't do business. Nothing good can come out of you. Mm -hmm. But that's a lie. You just need to find your divine, your destiny, yeah. your call, yeah. because you all have that call. Yeah. And so when I started to share more about my love, and I was enjoying all this beauty in my relationship with Mark, I said, you know what? I need to put out a post. So social media is very powerful. It's mm -hmm. all happened on social media. Okay. I put out a post and said, I'm doing this book called Love Unboxed. I mean, the name came while I was doing dishes. I like washing plates. So... Can you make my heart? Exactly. <laughs> washing plates? I like washing plates. So, um, so, you know, I was thinking, we came, I told Mark about the idea. He said it was good. I said, there must be other women who have gone through traumas. Love, tr love journeys have not been easy for them, and now they're happy. It would be nice to hear their story so we can encourage other women who have given up on love, or people who say, I'm too old. Mm. So meanwhile, I need to tell the audience, my marriage with Mark is only three years, right? Yeah. Which means I'm not 23. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not 23, just in case I do, and I do look 18, but you I'm do, not, do. yeah, 16, yeah, 16. <laughs> but I'm not 23, so it was a late marriage, and mm -hmm. some people who get to their 40s have already given up on anything relationship, mm -hmm. some people in their 50s have already given up on relationship, mm -hmm. and even 60s have given up on relationship, sure. but the good news is that Mark's mom, my mother-in-law, remarried at 75, yeah, she was a widow. To be honest with you, <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, we, we have different cultures, different mindsets. Um, I, I went to, many, many years ago, went to Coventry and met this elderly couple, you know, and um, they looked so much into each other. And I was like, wow, they must have been married for Then they just said, they're newly wed. And I was like, they're newly wed. <laughs> To stop to digest what was said to me you know and and so in different cultures in our culture as as africans we give up on love really really easily oh, yeah very but easily in, in in the western culture they they don't they don't they they 
I went to a, 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 a service one day, and this woman, um, you know, she was doing she was celebrating her seventieth birthday, and she was giving her speech, only for her to burst into tears, and and said, "When my husband died twenty five years ago," and she was still crying. And I, I looked at this woman, and I thought, twenty five years ago. Another thing is, men. I said to myself. If it was the other way around. Oh, six months later. That man would have been married by now. I know Because he would have said you've gone and you can't cope with life being single. Yeah, it's too much. So, you can't manage your children. You know, I just I just stopped and thinking, what's this woman doing 25 years later? But listen, if that's your choice, it's fine. But don't give up on love. Yeah. No, no, don't give up on love. You know, so I was thinking about that. Mark said, yes, it's a good idea. So I put it out on social media. So mm. I was looking for women, 20 women to share their love journeys. Yeah. Interestingly, the idea was supposed to be like romantic journeys. So tell us what your past was and then what your present is. But we found women reaching out to me saying, but what, what, what if about the love of yourself? Okay. You know, so there were women who said, I didn't love myself for a long time. I didn't see anything good in myself. And it mm. took me time to begin to love myself. And I said, yes, we will put that in the book. Because there are women who do not love themselves. They don't see anything good. That is a serious issue. It is a very serious about, yeah. issue, you know. Yeah. Um, they want to please everybody. They can't speak up. They can't, you know, be themselves they're because they are not confident, yeah. you know. So when those stories are coming into me, I said, yes. And so we decided to break the book into sections. Mm -hmm. Those, you know, that's about self-care, discovering you. We put that in the, in the book. We talked about romance, you know. We put that in the book. We talked about traumas, you know, divorce and how you manage it. We put that in the book. So a lot of the women in the book have, some of them have gone through divorce and some of them have come out of it. We had a lady who, um, her partners died shortly after marriage. So she is in her, I think, her fourth marriage now, but she's lost three, three other past husbands. So she was in the book, and when she told me, you know, she has just remarried, her fourth marriage, and she told me her past experience of losing partners, I looked at this woman, and I said, how are you so bubbly? How are you so? <laughs> because like, you would. Is you this would woman know. African? No, she's American. Wow. Because I can Black imagine, American. I can imagine if, if she was an African, the things that would have been said to oh, her. Oh, no. She killed them. Yes. <laughs> that, that's what just comes to my mind. Yeah. That, that's me. People have all this, you know, all this interpretation of things that really then affects those women from being able to, to most, carry yeah. on in their journey. What would people say? Or yes. what are people going, you know, that's it. Yes. But this woman is the most, if she's so beautiful, her spirit, so, so much fun to be with, you would never, ever know. Wow. That's happened to her. We have a lady in the book, I think she's 63, and she just found love three years ago. They're not married yet, but... You know, they just tore the world and they're just having fun. And so when she heard about the book and she told me her story, in fact, she was so giggly and so excited. And mm -hmm. I was saying, no, don't tell me, don't tell me, just write nice. it. Write it. I want to read it when you write it. Mm -hmm. but, so we have women of all ages. Mm -hmm. You know, we have women who have been in terrible, terrible. And I'd I like to share a story of a lady called Laura at some point. Yes. Um, Laura was in a relationship you know, her friends thought it was a good, you know, she was happy in it. And then she whispered to me and said, this isn't working. I'm thinking about leaving. And when she put pen on paper and she wrote down her story, shivers of mm -hmm. how a man can strip, you know, being in a relationship. And we're not saying all men are bad. Mm -hmm. they, are, they are good men. We're not mm -hmm. saying that. But there are some relationships that strip you of every confidence that you have. Yeah. You know, and she wrote and I said, are you sure you want to write this story because you're in the relationship? She said, yes, I'm ready to tell the world to let other women know what I'm going through and mm -hmm. so that they can read and identify the signs of mm -hmm. abuse. Because yes. abuse is not only when a man hits you. That's, that's a very, very crucial and important yeah. point. 
because many people when you when you mention to them that you were in an abusive relationship the first question they ask did he hit you did you hit you and if he didn't hit you then you have no right yeah to leave you yeah. have no right to say that that is abuse then you, you're just meant to stay there and find a way to work it out yeah, yeah. So it was mental abuse and making her, you know, don't wear that dress, don't do this, you know, you're showing off too much, cover up. And it all started off like that until gradually she began to lose herself and lose herself. And this is a woman who is a finance director. So she is not like she, she's not educated. Right. She's a very educated woman. So but she began, she began to be a woman who couldn't speak out. She couldn't mm. tell her friends, but she opened up to me and I said, are you sure? She said, yes, I want, I want to write in the book. So she's written the book and she's doing part two because now she's going through a divorce. She said, I'm stepping out of it, but I'm, there's so much that's happened that I want to write part two of Love on Box. Is there going to be a part two? And I said, yes, there's going to be a part two. So she's in part two to continue her journey, continue her story. So the readers who have read part one can follow her journey. Mm -hmm. And the way we've done the book is we, it's not, we haven't just written. We want whoever, when you pick a story, you, you follow the journey of that woman. You feel the emotion that they felt. You feel the joy, you know, the tears. You cry when they cry, you know, you laugh when they laugh. You know, some of the stories will really make you laugh. You know, I have one that she found this guy online. She never seen him, no photograph, no nothing. And she actually booked a ticket and flew to France to meet a guy. She didn't know what he looked like. <laughs> You see the kind of things women do? <laughs> you see the kind of things women do? And then when she got to the airport, she said, Oh, this might be candy camera. Maybe it's not even real. <laughs> it's not after, even... After traveling. After traveling and getting to the airport. But these are the kind of things that women do. You know, so it's such a fun book to read mm. because you, you just see lots of things and you're like, Wow, that sounds like me. I've done something like this before. And um, yeah, and then there are people who parents choose for them, their partners. Mm -hmm. And it just didn't work out. And when they rebelled, their families disowned them. So all sorts of stories there. So you might find your story in it. That's right. And how can we get a copy of Love and Box? It's on Amazon and major online bookstores. That's where you can find um, Love Unboxed mm -hmm. and we're doing a part two like I said um, of Love Unboxed and we're doing other books you know stepping out and doing Love Unboxed have brought the birth of other books right yeah okay we've only got two minutes left two minutes. so if you want to grab a copy of Love Unboxed it's on Amazon and there are all the details on the screen that you can grab um, you can contact Placida to get a copy you're doing a quick Facebook challenge tell us about it I'm doing a Facebook challenge. Uh, I've got a mastermind friend in America and uh, she told me about this Facebook challenge. We were doing 21 days Facebook Live. Okay. So every day for 21 days, you do a Facebook Live and you talk about yourself, your business. You're supposed to be vulnerable. There's no being formal and being together. No, just be yourself. You know, the lady who's organizing it, her name is Marissa, and her company is Leave Your Message. Mm -hmm. And she's saying, you know what, just be yourself. Let your audience get to know who you are. So some of us are really very formal. You know, we want to have everything together. Like me. Like you. <laughs> have everything together before we do a Facebook Live. But Marissa says, no, we need to capture it as we are. Uh, it can be anywhere, but just talk. And it's, it's been amazing. I've connected with some amazing people. Today is day five. So I'll be doing one, one Facebook Live today with you. So you're not running away from... <laughs> okay. We'll be doing a Facebook Live. And, um, and so you can follow Placida on, on, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. Yeah, LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Yeah. Um, and she's a vibrant person to, to get in touch with. And she, I, I need to say this, um, but she said, don't just connect with her. Introduce yourself, you know, say something about who you are so that she can know about you, not just accept you as a friend, you yeah. know, because we, we do have hoax people on, on Facebook, yeah. but she, she does like connecting with people. Um, but today we've talked about the love on box. We've talked about her, her story, and I believe that you have been inspired. Um, and, and, you know, whatever situation you find yourself, one thing, just know that God is the master planner. The things that you might see, you know, if you had not gone through the situations that you went through, you would not be able to identify 
with these women yeah you know you won't be able to embrace their stories yeah. because it would look like oh I, I don't you know that was not my life I don't know yeah. you yeah. know you know that must be your story and some of these things we, we, we because we cannot identify with them we are not able to connect with other women and Priscilla doesn't just do this book she's also a coach yes yes I, I work with women in business to help them grow their list you know, so I said leverage and monetize we take what you have and we make it bigger and better so listen connect with her and make sure that you get um, you you benefit from the products that she has and also offer her services until next week stay blessed stay on top and I want to say no more excuses. I see you. <laughs> Thank you very you so much. much. Thank you. Have a wonderful week. Thank you.